This is music, and this is another episode of Made of Steel. Welcome to another episode of Made of Steel, a series of videos where I go through my collection of bandmate releases, physical and digital, and I just talk about them so these are not reaction videos. I recently decided to grab a bunch of bandmate singles and the band Myco EP, just in digital uh, versions. So I'm gonna make like a, a bunch of shorter videos um, covering uh, the singles and the um, band Myco EP. So I'm probably not going to uh, do the the recommendation part of these videos because I don't want the recommendation part to be longer than the bandmate uh, part. That wouldn't make sense to me. I may throw in a recommendation when I get to um, the band Myco project. But yeah, so let's get down to business. In this video, we're going to have a look at this one here. We're going to go all the way back to I to Jinetsu no Matador. And apologies for butchering the Japanese language. This single is from 2014. So we're going back to the early stages of their career as bandmate. Um, it has three songs on it, and all the songs are composed by Kentaro Akutsu, because this is from before they started writing their own material. Uh, he wrote the lyrics too, I think, but the bandmate members were involved, as far as I understand, in the arrangement of these songs. Um, so it's from 2014. Now, if we uh, go back again and listen to the debut album, um, made in Japan. Uh, it's very different from uh, the signature style of hard rock and heavy metal that they uh, have nowadays. And that also applies to this single. And this single is actually also quite different from um, the uh, Made in Japan album, um, which at least had some hard rock elements and some hard hitting um, uh, alternative rock elements. Um, this uh, single it goes in a completely different direction for the most part. Uh, it has three songs on it. Uh, Aito Junetsu no Matador, the uh, title track. Then there's Thrill. And you have a song called Summer Drive. So let's actually just go through them uh, one by one. The title track of the single is very, very, very different from uh, the bandmate uh, style of hard rock. It's a funk pop rock song. Not a whole lot of distorted guitars in it even. It opens up uh, with a quite funky opening, some, some funky chords on the guitar, some pretty cool funky bass work, and that carries out through throughout the entire um, uh, song. Uh, it is a very poppy song overall. Uh, it has some pretty catchy vocal melodies, but nowhere near as big and powerful and memorable as what band made are known for now in their in the choruses uh kind of like a fun detail is that you have some trumpet effects and horn section effects in the background in the choruses and i don't know but i imagine that um that it's the purpose is to conjure up imagery of matadors and things like that um it's just a fun detail i think um there's some very good, you know, vocal performances in this song. Uh, actually, the vocals are great, I think. There's some very cool guitar solos. Uh, as far as I remember, there are like three of them, kind of like spread out uh, throughout the song. And these guitar solos are very tasty, and they do, I think, uh, illustrate how Konami was actually a pretty good guitar, lead guitar player already back then, I think. Uh, it's a fun pop rock song with funky elements, but it is a far cry from their bandmate signature hard rock style. Um, and I can imagine that some, you know, hardcore hard rock fans might not like this song. Personally, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's a fun song. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's uplifting and, you know, 
so I don't have a problem with it. Um, the highlights are the bass work um, and the vocals and certainly the guitar solos. So that's I to Junetsu no Matador. Uh, moving on to the second song, Thrill. That's still an awesome song. I covered it in my uh, New Beginning uh, video. It's groovy, it's heavy, it's funky, uh, it's still uplifting, it has lots of attitude, and it's still just a great song. Still one of my favorite bandmate songs. Um, I don't remember if I, if I uh, mentioned this, but there's kind of like in the uh, pre-chorus, there is kind of like a trade-off between Miku and Saiki, where Miku just goes, Hey! Uh, and I quite like that, for some reason. Uh, and I think Miku also uh, sings some of the second verse, um, which I think is pretty cool. But yeah, overall, Thrill, still a great song. And I think this is a song that will probably appeal to most, probably not all, but most kind of fans of hard rock, because it's a great hard rock song. Very groovy. Uh, the third song is called Summer Drive, and I think it's a Miku fronted song. Uh, it's also very, very different from their signature hard rock style. Uh, it's an up-tempo pop rock song. Maybe it has some pop punk elements to it. It kind of, to my ears, has the vibe that I associate with kind of like late 90s, early 2000s, kind of like teen pop, pop punk, skater, rock kind of music. Um, it's not a problem uh, to me that it has that vibe. Um, it has some nice catchy vocal melodies and some cool vocal harmonies, but it's still a far cry from the big powerful uh, choruses and pre-choruses that uh, bandmates are known for nowadays. Um, in the bridge, and I think, I think uh, Saiki uh, sings in the bridge, uh, it's a pretty cool bridge. It's a bit more actually in the direction of bandmates hard rock style. Uh, the riff is a bit hard rocky, I would say. Um, so I really like the bridge in this song. There's a nice guitar solo as well. And if indeed it is, and I think it is, I read that somewhere, uh, that it, if it is a Miku song, I will say she has a nice singing voice, a nice unpolished uh, raw singing voice. So Summer Drive, a fun kind of like pop rock, uh, pop punk maybe, it's not a punk song, but it, I think it has some elements of pop punk, right? But it's, it's a up-tempo, kind of like late 90s, early 2000s, teen pop rock, whatever song. It's not bad, but it's also very different from their hard rock style. So um, I don't have a problem with this single. I like the, uh, the two uh, songs that are quite remote from the uh, bandmate style. They're just, I mean, they're kind of interesting to go back and listen to that. Oh, so they actually played stuff like this and it's not bad uh, back in the early days. And then of course you have Thrill, which kind of looks ahead at the style they would be uh, famous for. And Thrill remains one of my favorite um, bandmate songs. So uh, very, very different, a far cry from their hard rock style, but it's kind of like a fun curiosity in their uh, discography, I would say. Uh, not bad songs, but I don't think that Apart from Thrill, I don't think this single will appeal to fans of metal and, and hard rock and so on and so forth. Uh, but I don't mind it. I mean, Thrill is my favorite song on this single, of course. Uh, highlights, Thrill. Um, the bass work throughout the entire uh, single, all three tracks, has some excellent bass work going on. I like the guitar solos as well. Uh, they're tasty, they're good. Uh, the vocals are great throughout uh, the single, and as I said, it's it's just an interesting listen. You know, when you know uh, Unseen World, you know Conqueror, um, and um, although Conqueror is a bit more to the poppy side, it's still quite different from what you have here. Uh, uh, World Domination, you know, those later uh, releases. It's kind of interesting to go back and listen to these very different songs. Um, so yeah. Uh, uh, Aito Junetsu no Matador, a fun listen. It does have thrill on it, which is great. So, uh, yeah, that's this video, and thanks for watching.